Hello everybody. Thanks again for visiting my YouTube channel. This is the place where we discuss the Lord's Recovery Movement of Witness Lee, also known as the Local Church Movement. Well, I was going to do the top 10 things the Lord's Recovery got wrong, and I had a list, and I started to do it, and I actually started twice, did the first time and deleted it, did the second time and deleted it. And I often do that. I'll do most of an episode once as sort of a dress rehearsal, and it kind of helps me to say things a little more fluidly and figure out what I'm actually going to say and need to say and how I'm going to say it. Well, I tried this one twice, and I kept getting depressed in the middle of it. It just kind of was going on and on, and some of the items in the list would cross over, and it felt like I was saying the same thing over and over. So I reduced it, for everybody's sake, to the top five things the Lord's Recovery got wrong. And we're going to start those right now. The number five thing the Lord's Recovery got wrong is man's authority over God's authority. And this ties into the whole thing I've always talked about, about the abuse of spiritual authority, the presumption of authority where it doesn't exist, extra local co-workers, and the idea that they're just people floating around in the world that have authority over you because they're better Christians than you or have more growth, quote, quote, than you or whatever. And all that's nonsense. That's not the way authority works in the New Testament. The New Testament, the authority is God's. Authority is the Holy Spirit. If you enter into an association with a group of Christians in a church or ministry, then you need to respect the lines of authority in that organization. But the idea is there's people that just can walk into your life and tell you what to do, spiritually or otherwise, is ridiculous. We all answer to God, and that's what God always wanted. That's why he never wanted the children of Israel to have a king. He wanted them to go directly to him. David wasn't a priest, but he had a relationship with God. God led him directly, and anybody could have been that way. Prophets, they all had their relationship with God, and God tapped into that relationship for them to do work for him. Any organization is going to have a hierarchy. They're kind of weird on hierarchy because so they condemn it and then they have one. Well, the Bible neither condemns one nor tells us to have one. They're just inevitable in some situations. In any organization, a church or ministry, you're going to have leaders and you're going to have sub-leaders and you're going to have the guys at the bottom. And that's just the way it is. That's not a bad thing. The problem is their vision, is, as it often is, is double-minded. They claim to not have a hierarchy, but they have one. So that's the worst of both worlds, because they use a hierarchy to control people, but then they claim they don't have it by implying that this isn't a hierarchy, this is spiritual authority. Well, they don't have that spiritual authority either. God's voice is the voice we hear. And as I've said, you need to cooperate with other Christians. If you're in an organization, you need to recognize who the leaders are and be humble about it, but you don't have to stay in that organization. Okay, the number four, top five thing the Lord's Recovery got wrong is... Hidden truths over plain truths. Now, Lord's Recovery, the whole uniqueness of their theology is based on hidden truths. First off, let's talk about what the plain truths are in the Bible. Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus came to die for our sins. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus ascended to the Father. Jesus is going to come back. He's the Lord of the universe. The Holy Spirit came to live in us. If we believe in Jesus, we receive salvation. We're supposed to meet with one another and love one another. We're supposed to share the gospel with unbelievers. Those are plain truths in the Bible. We are supposed to help the poor. That's a much plainer truth in the Bible, and the Lord's recovery mocks it, helping the poor. Oh, not anymore. We don't help the poor. Forget about them poor people. Buy some more ministry materials. They emphasize and uplift all these obscure, quote, truths, unquote. Like, for example, God's economy. There's one verse in 2 Timothy 1.4 that uses the word okonomia, and they've elevated it into this entire theology around God's economy, which they defined as something which the verse doesn't even say it is, dispensing of the triune God and all that kind of stuff. It's a hidden truth. Another hidden truth is the local ground. Why isn't the rest of the church seeing this wonderful, crucial truth about the church? The rest of the church has been going around clueless and really hasn't even had any real churches in 2,000 years because they didn't realize the only real churches were the ones on the local ground. Only the Lord's Recovery sees this. It's another hidden truth. 
Witness Lee specialized in these. One reason is he was entirely into symbolism in the Bible, looking at things that he called types. Any kind of story he saw where he could see some kind of indication of some kind of speaking of God in code, he picked up on it. Let me give you an example. The body. Christ is the head, we are the body. When you touch somebody's body, you touch them, right? So therefore, we must be Christ. Therefore, we are God. Now, isn't that a piece of logic there? Well, it's taking a metaphor too far. When the Bible says we're the body of Christ, that is a metaphor for a reality that we experience. Yes, we have Christ's life. That doesn't mean we are Christ in the way they want to take it to. Another hidden truth is mingling. There's one verse in Leviticus somewhere that talks about fine flour mingled with oil. Therefore, suddenly we're being mingled with God. And whatever you think mingling means, that's what it means. Or I should say whatever Witness Lee thought it meant. What does that mean? Our natures are being mingled with his nature. What does that mean? My nature is being mingled with his nature. My imagination can run wild because I don't know what that means. And neither did Witness Lee. He just mouthed it off because it sounded good because he liked to be innovative and he wanted to be special. He wanted to have a special ministry that nobody else had seen. And so that was his thing, continually coming up with this wow stuff, these big high peak truths that he could wow everybody with. So he would dig stuff out of the Bible. And another hidden truth is one the Lord's recovery used to destroy churches and replace them with their own. They did it in Toronto. They did it in Columbus. They've done it elsewhere where they decide a church is leprous and they say, we can get rid of this church and start our own. Bible says there's one church in the city, okay, and it's really talking in an abstract sense like we talk about one church on earth. One church in the city, you can't replace that church. You can't say that church is no longer the church and we're going to put our own church and our own people and they're the church and these other people aren't the church anymore. You can't do that. Well, what was their basis? Some obscure verses in the Old Testament about if a person's house became leprous, you had to burn the house out. Well, that's just a civil ordinance of God that's common sense. You got leprosy, you need to get rid of it. It's got nothing to do with the church. How can you apply that to the church? Because they use the word house and the church is the house of God. Ah, I see. Yes, let's hang our whole theology on that. It doesn't matter because all the co-workers in the Lord's Recovery in North America are trying to do is find an excuse to get rid of churches they don't like. Okay, moving on. The number three, top five thing Lord's Recovery got wrong is status quo over progress. Now this is kind of a funny one because it ties into their claims of being the recovery when in fact they're ossified and stuck in the mud and haven't changed at all for 35 years because they're just doing what Witness Lee told them to do. They're on automatic pilot, they're on cruise control. They're going in and they're going to drop the bombs and they're going to do just like they were told and just like they were programmed and they're not going to change anything because why? Because Witness Lee was the apostle and he said nobody could improve on anything he said. It was the best. When somebody would write a book, he'd say there's not any new light here because I say so. He was the minister of the age. He had it all. Everything's been recovered. Don't change anything. Don't do anything differently. And so these guys are even to the point where they still get up on these platforms to speak in the same suits Witness Lee wore 25 years ago, standing in front of the same blue chalkboard in their videos like he did back in 1975. And they're still doing the same thing and saying the same things over and over and over that they always have, as if this is the highest truth you can improve on it. Well, that's not the recovery. You don't think God's had anything to recover since Witness Lee left? You think he got it all right and it can't be improved on? God has nothing left to say to us? Witness Lee didn't make any mistakes? Nothing he said needs to be changed or improved on or even thrown away because he made a mistake? No, 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 no. Because he was the apostle. You see the problem with having an apostle? You're stuck with what the guy said. And that's what was meant to happen when Paul and James and John and Peter were here. But those guys, as I've said, they had a special status. They had a special commission. And they wrote the Bible, and the canon was closed, and now we have the Bible. And the beauty of that is that none of us have the authority to tell everybody else what that means. Okay, it's open to interpretation. The Lord gave us the liberty to know him 
because he knew if he put somebody in charge, that would be a recipe for disaster. We'd have the Catholic Church again. No offense to Catholics, but we'd have a Pope system where everybody's locked in and you can't change anything. That's anti-recovery. Okay, let's move on. Number two, top five thing Lord's Recovery got wrong is institutions over people. This has to do with them talking about abstract notions other than people. The number two commandment in the Bible is love people. Jesus died for people. He didn't die for the church in an abstract institutional sense. He died for the people who are the church. So when it says that God is building his church, he's not building an institution. He's building up the people and together they form the church. And the same thing applies to other institutions and abstract notions like the recovery. You need to be for the recovery, brother. No, you don't need to be for the recovery. The Bible never tells you to be for the recovery. It tells you to be for God and people. Same thing with God's move or God's eternal purpose or building up the bride. Oh, the wonderful bride. We need to build her up. Where is she? She's over here with us. She's not out there anywhere. We got her. We're building her up. We're going to bring the Lord back. Come back to the bride that we built up. It's institution. It's a way of making people a means to an end. Where you're not taking care of the people, you're taking care of some institution and you're using people to do it. That's a huge mistake. It happens all the time. And the way it happens is you value things over people. You value ideas over people. You value institutions over people. We need to guard against that. Jesus died for people. And I remember when I went to a special event, which was two women who had been taken hostage in Afghanistan, and they were Christian missionaries, and they went through a lot of harrowing things, but they came out okay, and they went around touring and talking. I remember one of the women was up talking, and this was after I'd left the recovery, but I was still very much infected by their manner of thinking. She would pat her heart, and she said, if you want to know the heartbeat of Jesus, just say, people. She'd pat her chest, people, people. And I remember thinking there, looking at her cynically, you don't know anything. God's had an eternal purpose. That's what he cares about. What is God's eternal purpose without people? Take the people out and what does God have? Nothing. Okay, it's all about people. And he doesn't mind because he cares about people and he loves people. Okay, moving on to the number one top five thing the Lord's recovery got wrong. It is, drum roll please, Process over relationship. Now, this means that they depersonalize their contact with God into a flow or into something called, quote, life, unquote. But basically, the personality of God has been put in the background, and you have this sense of this life, this flow, this experience, this good feeling. And you just enjoy this and you come to meetings and you enjoy the flow of life and you enjoy the dispensing of the triune God. But don't you dare think that you can have a relationship with God where he would ever speak anything to you that contradicts what we say. Okay, we get the speaking from God. We've got his speaking. All you get to do is enjoy his life. We have his word. And we will tell you what it means. And if you contradict us or have a problem with anything we say, we're going to bury you. Again, just look at Joe Castile. She wrote an incredibly intelligent, cogent, pointed letter pointing out the problems in that movement. And what did they do? They called her an agent of Satan. They dismissed Joe Castile's experience of her relationship with God. They said it was a lie. They didn't have any humility to submit and say, you know what, we need to pray about this, brothers, and find out if we have these problems. Let me ask the guys in the Lord's Recovery something. Have you guys ever prayed about the fact that you're viewed as a cult? Have you ever asked the Lord to show you why you're viewed that way? Have you ever done any research into cult studies or abusive group studies, controlling group studies? And have you ever asked yourself, whether you match up on the points of these groups, and if you notice that, did you ask yourself why? Have you ever done this? Will all the DCPs work? Have they ever checked into this? Have you ever prayed about this? Have you ever asked God? Let me ask you about a more basic prayer. Have you guys ever prayed 
that God would really show you what's really true and false about what you believe. Because when I was in the Lord's Recovery, we never did anything like that. If it came from Witness Lee, we bought it hook, line, and sinker. We never prayed about it. We never went to God with it and said, how do you feel about this word, Lord? Where are you with this? Have we done anything wrong? Are we off in any way? Do you guys ever pray that? But ask yourself, do I really know the Lord? Am I really asking the Lord questions? Am I asking him to speak to me? If you can't pray the prayer, Lord, if there's something wrong with the recovery, tell us, then you aren't very good leaders. When I was active on the forums, I would sometimes challenge a member of the Lord's recovery to pray for 30 days whether his ideas about the Lord's recovery were true. I did not get one person to agree to do it. One brother, I said, I challenge you to pray for 15 minutes a day for 30 days asking the Lord if the Lord's recovery really is what you think it is. You know what he replied to me? He said, I don't need to pray. That's basically all you need to know. You could take all my videos and sum them up in that reply. That's just willful ignorance and stupidity, quite frankly. Anyway, process over relationship. What does that mean? That means you don't view the Lord as a person, truly. You view him as a commodity. He is the commodity that empowers you to do what you want to do in this movement. It's no longer about serving him. It's no longer about doing what he says. It's all about this institution. These tie together. And I would just ask the members of the Lord's Recovery to go through these again and go back to having a relationship with God and get away from just enjoying the processed God. Okay, get to know God, processed or not. Stop being stuck in the mud. Witness Lee was not the high peak. He was not the best it could get. Far from it. If you're the recovery, start making some more progress. People, not institutions. Get back to loving people. Get back to caring about people. That's what Jesus cares about. That's who he died for. He didn't die for some kind of abstract purpose. Plain truths. Go back to the plain truths of the Bible. Pick up a Bible without any footnotes and read it and ask God to speak to you through it. You don't think he can? You think you've got to read somebody else's footnotes and just say, oh, I'll just do whatever he said because I'm just a dummy. And he was the apostle. No. Go back to the plain truth of the Bible. Focus on that. Major in that. Get away from all the types and shadows and trying to be some kind of hot shot with hidden truths that nobody else knows. And finally, go back to being under God and not under men. Stop giving people credit for being apostles and some kind of special co-workers because they say they are. Get back to following God. Get back to obeying Him. Honor your leaders, yes. Be cooperative with your church, yes. If you're a member of a ministry, then cooperate. But if you feel to leave, if you feel they're off, then do it. Never let anybody tell you you can't leave their group. Never let anybody tell you that. And anybody says that, you guys need to go somewhere and repent. Seriously. Okay, those were the top five things the Lord's Recovery got wrong. I'm glad we got through those, but I think they're important. But I would encourage everybody to go back to the last episode, see what the Lord's Recovery got right, compare it to this episode, and get an understanding of how things got shifted away from the original intent. It's very subtle, and as we know, the enemy is subtle. That's it for this time. Thanks again for listening. Take care.